Sorry. Okay, streaming started. Now I'm recording as a backup. Mm -hmm. so you're live. Hi, welcome to the Ethics and Disciplinary Committee meeting. We're starting at 7.04 p.m. Um, and we're going to, uh, did you get minutes, um, Jeremy? I want to make a motion. Of, did you get any minutes? My gal said he was going to send it to you. Jeremy? Okay. He might put me in here. All right, so we're going to bypass the minutes. <laughs> and go to the next item on the, on the agenda. So last week we heard case 114, uh, Edward Perez and Bernadette Friara is the respondent. And now we're going to hear a response from Bernadette. Are you ready? Okay, we can go ahead. That one ready. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, this is a uh, respondent um, for case 114. Mm -hmm. For many years, the Van Est community was represented at Community Board 11 by two residents. Van Est did not have a voice, and many concerns were not addressed. That's when I began my research on our local governance and how to resolve these issues. With guidance, I followed procedure and was appointed to the board. With this knowledge, I worked with other neighbors to support their application uh, to submit their applications and soon Van S tag five representatives. Since 2008, we all worked together to keep our concerns heard and went on to form the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance. In 2021, two Van Ness representatives died and one resigned. With new board members, the chair, district manager, and staff get a printout of contact information and addresses. I was so happy to see that three new members from Van Est bringing our representative ba representation back up to five. If mentioning his address, Mr. Perez, or that he represented Van Est was upsetting in any way, I was not made aware of this by Mr. Perez. I would have immediately apologized and kept my enthusiasm to myself. To my defense, I know all of the new board members' addresses and neighborhoods that they represent, and not once was any information disclosed by me. For the future, if anyone, submit, if anyone should ask the Ethics Committee on guidance to resolve a similar situation, first, Ask the person if they had a friendly conversation or sent a text message to make the other person aware. If after a friendly warning, that person continues, then the next step is filing a complaint. So to conclude, my intentions were never to impose. A quick text message would have gotten Mr. Perez an immediate apology and made me aware. And I truly appreciate it when somebody is kind enough to handle a situation in this way. Thank you. So um, this committee want to discuss? Uh, I, I, I like to know under what circumstances um, was his address disclosed? You mentioned Van Ness. How did it all come about? And what did you say? To be quite honest, if I had, I, I don't know exactly what I said. And and to be honest, if I said something that was heard by him, I'll take his word for it. But I honestly, I know I had said, 
I know, I know what I remember is that I had said, and he represents Van Est. He comes from Van Est. So, and there were three new members from Van Est. So I was enthusiastic about that. Um, did, did, did you disclose his address? To be honest, you would have to ask him specifically if he says I did at some point. Um, I'm not going to argue, but if I did, then I apologize. I might have been. I remember one time when I, when Edgar and um, Edward were in the same proximity, I think I might have said, you guys live on the same block. You live on the same block on Taylor. So, um, and I know it's very similar, the similar numbers. But I know that because we were given a printout, but it might have just been in that situation. Um, if I had disclosed it in any other way, I, honestly, I, I, you would have to ask Edward about that. And, that. and Edward Perez was there to hear that. He, he, I guess so, because he, he said that he filed a complaint. So I would have to say that he was, I, I personally don't remember. And he never approached you about the issue. No, I, I and I really do. Honestly, I, w I wish you would. I would have said, I would have apologized right then and there. I would have said, I'm so sorry. I was not aware. I was just being enthusiastic. <laughs> How many times um, has Mr. Perez claimed that you've uh, violated his privacy? Uh, it's in there um, once or twice. If uh, there were more times. How many times have you? It's alleged that you violated his privacy in his presence. I don't honestly, I'm not aware, but I'm I'm not going to split hairs if he feels offended by something. I'll give him that and say, okay, if you're offended by something, I understand, but it, you got to make the person aware. The reason why I ask is because uh, in the complaint, he alleges that someone brought that to his attention, and then to me, that's hearsay. So I just want to find out whether uh, you've said it more than once in his presence. I don't know. Um, I know that maybe at the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance when I introduced Stacey Ann because she was there at the meeting, I said we have you know a new board member. She represents Van Est, um, and we have two other board members also. They live they live in the neighborhood. So I might have said it at that point, but I would. I don't think I had said. I don't. I wouldn't have. Just, said anything about the address at all. So I might have just said um, they, live, they live in Van Est or they live on Taylor, the same the same street as our vice president. So. So we don't know what uh, Mr. Perez said, you said. The specifics, specifics, yeah. Only that he, his, his privacy was violated, but he didn't explain uh, to what extent that privacy was, uh, was uh, violated. Or the digits were used, or an apartment number was used, or an ad, a street, the whole complete address was used. Yeah, I, 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 I would have to be remind, be reminded of those specific. And that's not something that was asked, Madam Chair, during uh, his presentation. Naomi, I'm sorry. Say that again. Uh, was Mr. Perez asked when he uh, gave his testimony mm -hmm. uh, what what did he hear was disclosed? Whether digits were disclosed, whether actual address was disclosed. No, but you can. We can. We can have him. I'm just we testified, so I'm just wondering if this committee, because yeah. I wasn't here for that, whether mm -hmm. he was asked those questions. Right. No, we did not ask about whether digits were um, relayed um, publicly. No. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Um, I'd like to give Mr. Perez. An opportunity to answer your questions. Sure, yeah. sure. He, he didn't ask me officially. I'm not going to. Right. I'm asking course. you. I'm asking you. But you would like for me. I would like for you to answer the question. Well, we're having a discussion. So you, so basically, both um, part, participants in the case okay. can answer those questions. So yeah. Would you like for me to chime in? That's yeah. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, excuse me. I just. Respectfully, I want to be able to go over here. I don't want to have you turning around inside. Um, I understand you weren't here the day that I had my um, hearing that day. Um, but I 
I was timed and I felt like I was a little rushed and I had a lot to review that day. Um, so in the essence of time, I, I didn't feel like there was a lot of questions that were asked in that. Let me ask you, Mr. Perez, uh, what did you hear Bernadette say in regard to your, your home address? So on the meet and greet, that was the first uh, instance. Um, that was the private meet and greet where they had the new members come to the board offices. Um, she had mentioned my address that day. Okay, now tell me specifically what you heard her say. She, well, this is a public hearing. The, the digits, the digits, digits, digits and, and the street address were okay. mentioned. And she and I would re recall that she was trying to remember it because she couldn't remember it at the time, but she was really making an effort to try to remember it. And, you know, maybe it was excitement. Maybe it wasn't. I didn't feel that there was excitement for any new members that day of the initial meet and greet. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to get into something that's going to take attention away from it. But I will tell you that it there was nothing malicious about it, but she did it. And at first I was like, that's a red flag for me, okay. you know, and, um, and it happened again, um, in another instance, um, uh, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, uh, you know, again, it was, a, it was in passing. It was before a meeting had started. I can't recall the exact meeting, but she did it again. Tell me what she did. She mentioned the digits and, and the address. And again, on that instance, I will say that there was some excitement. Um, because she was talking about the new members in that instance. Is that a community board? Meeting? It was a community board meeting here. I can't recall exactly which one, but it was before it started. And I do recall that she was excited. Um, she was talking about the future of the board and the members. And she was talking about the members that lived in Van Ness, exactly like she said she was. Um, but she mentioned the address again. Mm -hmm. um, and to her defense, no, I did not send her a text message. I, we did not have a formal conversation about that. I did not express to her that I had a problem with it because by the time that Stacy Ant or wh whoever had um, said that they were at the Van Nest Neighborhood Alliance meeting um, had mentioned that she said my address again, there was already a whole separate situation set in motion where the, the leadership of this board was a major topic of concern for me. Um, and I was trying not to think so much about the address thing because we had all these other things going on. Mm -hmm. um, but then that full board meeting happened and I started thinking to myself, I was like, wait a minute, this mentioning of my address, because again, I was labeled a political operative before I even joined this board. I told myself, I, and I, I saw it happening, I was like, this could be an intimidation tactic. Do you, do you think that it, that, that it was intimidation tactic when it first Absolutely. when it first happened? When it first happened, no. Okay, that's no. Not what I know. Now, uh, both both instances, you you said it was uh, sort of a, a, uh, an excitement. Uh, you, you have a Van Ness get together. Uh, the second instance was the excitement. First instance, uh, what, what was it? The, the what? I'm sorry. Second? What, what event was that first event? The first instance was a private meet and greet here at meet board and greet. Would you say that meet and greet is sort of a, a, a happy atmosphere? It's supposed to be pleasant. I felt ignored when I walked in. I had well, to, that's that's I, I, so I get what you're I'll saying. I tell you, it's, it wasn't. It didn't feel happy. It didn't feel like that. It felt like a private session to go ahead and kind of instill initial thoughts on how you should behave on this board or mm -hmm. or. There was sly comments and little jokes made about politicians, people holding office. So, mm -hmm. no, to me, it wasn't a happy, pleasant, you know, kumbaya environment. Okay. Now, uh, and you've never, uh, and you did not approach Bernadette to talk to her about the situation? Um, no, because at that point, you know, from the very first meet and greet, I kind of like already had, you know, seen somewhat of colors. Mm -hmm. And I had already seen full board meetings and meetings on video before I joined this board. So I kind of already had an inkling that, you know, there was some issue with her style of leadership on there. Okay. Have you heard anyone complain that she's uh, uh, violated uh, uh, other board members' privacy in the past? No, I can only that's, speak to that, my own that's personal what's relevant. experience. That's what's relevant here. I can only speak to my own personal yeah. experience. So you haven't heard anybody else complain that she violated anybody else's privacy? Absolutely not. I don't okay. see how that's relevant. What is re is relevant? I think like, it's very relevant because uh, I, I want to be. It would be, be hearsay if he had heard of something 
something really well, he said he that. watched videos and he was able to get, get oh, a sure. sense of how the board operated sure. so i want to find out if you've heard from any board members whether she's ever, ever done this to any other board no. members before but i think this is really pertaining to him i think we need to keep it focused on well his, I, i'm asking him yeah. directly whether he's heard this before i don't feel like yeah, this question is out of line not, uh, his, it's not out of line because you mentioned you you, you saw videos in the past so right. you opened the door for me to find out what you've heard from the videos whether she's violated or anything in the well past. no the, me watching the videos didn't have anything to do with um trying to see if she's violated privacy Right. Me watching sessions was before I even decided to join this board, being mm. a member of this community. I got it. And that's why I was watching it. And and again, that's what I'm saying. Look, a lot of people say don't judge a book by its cover. Correct. But I had plenty of opportunity to form a personal opinion about the leadership of Bernadette Ferrara while watching this board on video for months. And then, and then, that's what made me want to join this board. Mm -hmm. But again, there was already labels floating on yeah. social media, screenshots that I believe I included in the uh, package, um, where she's labeling new board members as political operatives. And again, that's when I started really yeah. seeing things. I, I would just like to say that I think that this complaint is simply about what is perceived as a violation of privacy. I agree. And that should be separate from what anybody's perceptions are one way or the other. Mm -hmm. I think that if you are excited about someone now representing your area, like I, if I'm excited about some, I would love to have another person from Brady Court be on this board. But in my excitement, I would say, yes, we have another member here from Brady Court. I would certainly not give their actual address. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate that Bernadette shared that in her excitement, she may have mentioned it. And I appreciate that she remembers in some instances where she may have done so and that she was gracious enough to say there may have been other interests instances where I don't remember doing so. Mm -hmm. So, so far what I'm hearing that actually pertains to this complaint is that it clearly happened that this individual's address was shared. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I don't know in what context that that actually would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. Well, the only reason why, uh, I'm, I'm asking the questions is because initially it, he wasn't bothered by it, but then when he started looking at the videos and seeing her leadership style, that led him in a different direction. So I think that's where it becomes relevant. So may I? Yes. Just to clarify, it always bothered me, but it didn't bother me in the sense that I was going to make an ethics complaint. It's like one of those three strikes you're out things, right? That's what I was getting to because you initially uh, you initially wanted guidance from this committee. No, the guidance, the request for guidance happened um, because I wanted to file the ethics complaint. Mm -hmm. So I was asking for guidance on how can I go about filing this ethics complaint. Mm -hmm. That was the request for guidance. So he, he's new to the board, so yeah, he's exactly. new to the filing process. Even this process is mm -hmm. new, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I think. Like I said, I think we need to focus on, you know, whether there was a violation or not, and then, um, you know, look to what we're going to do next. I think the, um, <clears throat> and, uh, Ellie brought up a, a good point. The, the, I think the, the bigger issue, um, just, um, uh, just like Jeanette said, the, um, the violation of privacy is one thing. But I think that the violation of privacy in the, you know, colored by the intimidation is another. I, I, I'm clear, Mr. Perez, that after this, these instances happened after you were given an email um, calling you impatient and an activist. Yeah, is that correct? Now, now what does that got to do with the address? Yeah, okay. well, because See, it, this is what I'm talking it about. feels, it, it seems to me uh -huh. that there's the, the, I just want it on the record for the record, but it seems to me that he made the complaint because not only because there was a violation of privacy, which obviously did happen, you know, admittedly happened. Um, but I think that like Jeanette said, she doesn't see a, a 
you know, like a, a good reason for that. And that's where I come back to the intimidation part because he had already been labeled this and that. Not intimidation, though. But I if you see. have three, if you have more than, if you're excited because you have member additional membership from Van Ness, and Edward was the only person then on the board from Van Ness, and you let his address slip, that might be one thing. But if there is more than one new board member that is now representing Van Ness, their addresses were not shared. So I, I think that that could make someone then question, if this was your excitement about Van Ness and you didn't share everyone's address, why? Now you're, why? you're really introducing, you know, uh, your, your own uh, state of mind of, of what he might have been thinking. And I don't think that's fair for this. No, I'm, no I'm this is what he was my thinking. state yeah. of mind. That's what, that, yes, that's that's what, what he, was, he was feeling. It, that's what like your was. state of mind, not his. So, so let's, well, and again, let me, can I, can I clarify? Yeah, because, please. you know, I, I, I appreciate the questions that he's asking, mm -hmm. um, but he's not asking the right question, I feel. And that's what led you to this. You know this this thought of of filing the ethics complaint, and and again it's the pattern, right? It's it's the That's my concern. It's the hey, you know, there's a political operative being appointed to this board. Then the first sharing of the address, only my address, but there's other members of my address. Let me ask you, when the the can I to just so I can so again, um, and and I was letting you finish and stuff, but you know. It, I wasn't done with my point. Okay, I'm trying to establish the pattern. Yeah. Um, so you have the chairperson of a board before a member is even appointed to the board. Mind you, her first post was in March. I didn't get my email from the board until April. And she's saying that there was already new members that were political operatives being appointed to this board. That was number one. Um, now, you have, again, the two instances you know, one instance, which was at the meet and greet with the, with the address, you have the second instance, which was at a later meeting also, you know, with, with my address. And then in the midst of that, we have emails where I'm being labeled an activist and my proactive approach, you know, is being mislabeled as activism. Not only that, but I'm, I, she's using the 90 day probation period as a way to silence me. Now, again, Political activist saying my address, I mean, excuse me, political operative saying my address, calling me an activist, using the 90 day period to shut me up. Yes, I started having a concern for my privacy, but again, I didn't have a conversation with her because she already set this ball in motion for me. Before I even came to this board, there was a target painted on my back. So you are very, um, Everybody should be very sure that I had a concern for my privacy and that, yes, there was definitely something very wrong here. Say something. May I, I can address? Can I just, yeah, yeah, sure. So, Edward, um, you, would you be able to send me where, where I actually said political, political operative? Just send it to me. Just send it to me. Okay. Um, I'm not saying that it's not there, but um, but the the 90 day thing was something that was just instilled, right, Naomi? With uh, we had just yes. discussed that um, as being part of the bylaws, where um, we were going to at 90 days just. Um, see how the new board members were doing. Um, it was it was brought into the board. Um, so the 90 days wasn't something that um, I threw out there as a deterrent. It was something that was really very new because at that point, we're just going to see how, how the new board members were doing and that it was coming, you know, that, you know, 90 days is just something that's new to everybody. So it wasn't used as a weapon. And I think um, also Edward in the email, I basically, and I have a copy of that. And I had said the word activist, I had said, I, you know, to understand the intention that it was meant because I even call myself an activist because I have so many things that 
I was passionate about, you know, I have a, a list of things uh, with regards to, you know, the animal shelter, animal rescue, um, van nest issues. There were things that I have been an activist since 2000 or not, whatever. So if I'm calling myself an activist, I even said in an email, I apologize. And I said, please understand in which the intention it was meant. It was not meant in a negative way at all. If I call myself that. You do know that I know I don't trust you. And I stopped trusting you the day of the meet and greet. And Everything that you've done I'm, has I'm caused me to now, now, now trust you. I have to yeah. interrupt because I'm, I'm sorry. And I know you want to express yourself um Edward, but I, I would like you, if you if you guys afterwards may I ask my about that question. part of it about, question, but, but, but I, I I I I and I'm not trying to dismiss you I'm just trying to say right. I want to move the case along so that we can talk about the violation itself I don't have a, I don't have a back and forth I just but I'd be able to say one more thing before you finish after you finish I just want to just say that um god now I can't remember <laughs> oh, sorry uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Um, I just, I think that in the, in the grand scheme of things that, um, you know, people on this board, including myself have been harassed at their homes or places of business. And so to, I'm not, I'm not aware of anybody else that's had their address given out. Um, Mine has to everyone in well, the world. <laughs> this is, this is, that's. That's another ball game, but you know, by by you particularly, and so I think that you know a, a reasonable person could could come to the conclusion that it was purposeful and probably not for a good a, a good reason, and that's all I have to say. I have a question. Okay. 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 You have an answer. We have this that you provided to us, and it's here. It says that you know she does use the term political operatives. But at any point, did she actually name who the political operatives she thought were being appointed to the board? No, but she said it was new members. And again, by deductive reasoning, I'm the only member that she's been saying the address to. I mean, it, it's spreading the address. Of, so it was, it was an assumption so I that felt, you might be one of the well, those that she's, she yes, highlighted as such, yes. but she never actually gave anyone's names no, out. I mean, does the, do, do, you know, do people that are doing intimidation ever advertise that they're intimidating somebody? I mean, no. Now, see, but see, uh, I don't want to go with the intimidation factor because that's got nothing to do with this particular case. But I, I do want to ask you because in, in your complaint you say, however, I I recently I have become aware. You didn't say you heard, or directly to you, but that you became aware right. uh, of instances. Please explain to me what those instances were and who made you aware. So, and again, when I did that was in essence to protect the privacy of the board member that had told me, but uh, Bernadette Ferrara had already mentioned the board member's name and where the board member heard it, which was at a Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance meeting. Um, so that should answer your question there. Well, the thing is, we're going to move on because that we want to get to the violation. Is there a violation? And vote on that. Okay, so let's can we just vote on the and then we can move forward. So all all those who are in, um, who agree with Edward Perez that Bernadette Ferrer made a violation, the um say yay or is that. Um, okay. Should we start anyway. here and say agree, not agree, abstain? Yeah. I agree that there was a violation. Um, I also agree that there was a violation. I agree there was a violation. You know I think that may that there was a violation. I just don't think it was intentional. Okay. And then that's that. That'll be my answer too. You you agree with the violation, yeah. but not intentional. Okay. But I, you know, uh, we, we didn't have discussion, but we, we think about this whole thing, and I like to be able to. Uh, to, see, I setting up a meeting and bringing two two people together to discuss a uh, a, uh, a violation without mm -hmm. without the parties trying to uh, talk talk to each other about that. Well, that's, that's I, nice. I think I, I don't think that's the way it, it ought to be. 
I think uh, if if I have a problem with you, Naomi, mm -hmm. I would come to you and say, listen, you violated my privacy. I appreciate you don't do it again. We're talking about getting six people together. We're talking about taking time to go over a complaint where if they could have just settled it mm -hmm. and gotten the assurance of each other, that's mediation. Right. And then uh, with, with, the, with the understanding that uh, this shouldn't happen again, mm -hmm. and then a disclosure by all of us to all of our committee members, all our board members, that no one is to disclose the, the, the uh, person's privacy. I think that would have been a more appropriate way of okay. handling the situation other than filing a complaint. Okay. But this is the only, right now, this is the only. Sure. Okay, go ahead. And I disagree, and I normally believe that the best way to settle something is to speak to one another. Mm -hmm. But if I want to use the parallel situation of a work environment, if an employee has an issue with the, the director, they can't comfortably approach the director, they would have to go to HR. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, because it is a board member and the chair of the board, I think that we are, then the ethics committee became mm -hmm. the mediation board. Yeah. I think because of their respective positions, that a, a board member, especially a new board member, may not feel comfortable approaching and having a conversation with the chair of the board. And therefore, I think that's, and again, it is my opinion, mm -hmm. that that's why it was handled this way. So, I'm, I, but I, we're all unanimous that there was a violation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to move forward to the remedies. So, Edward, what I did, and you guys can disagree with me or not, with, in term, I'm going backwards from seven up. Regular ethics audits, this, this committee is the ethical committee. So we do that and we're gonna be, you know, we try to have um, forums and things like that. Like I'm having meeting etiquette today, next month we're doing something. So we, we do try to, um, you know, inform the public about ethics. So I'm, I'm gonna take that off the table, is that okay? Yes. Anybody have an issue? Okay. Um, transparent complaint resolution process. We do have that built okay. I, can, I can go over that with you if you don't feel comfortable with it i can go over that with you so that you feel more comfortable but that the um the, res, the transparent um complaint resolution is this process okay anybody disagree with me i'm taking that one off the resolution but anybody okay okay so six um training on ethical conduct this committee is responsible for that um and that is in our future <laughs> okay it's in our future so i can take that off real quick with that um enhanced communication protocols um we can and i see here um a commitment to upholding privacy standards Jer is jeremy on okay. um veronica do you know if we have a privacy like a training? Yeah. I don't think we did. I, I tried to look for one. I couldn't find one. Okay. So we will, I'm going to fold number two and number four together. And we're going to look for like a private privacy standard um, document or training. Okay. May I, may I just say something? I guess to, but I just, Edward, personally, I just want to say you, if there's I do apologize, and really from my heart, there is really no way that I wanted to make a, make you feel uncomfortable. Um, I would have liked to know that I was doing that. Sometimes I get enthusiastic, and if anybody knows me, as far as when it comes to Venice, I get very enthusiastic. So I do apologize for that, and also about calling you an activist. I really do apologize for that if that is something that offends you. But in, in my realm of world, an activism is a positive thing. So, mm -hmm. and if there's anything else that you want to talk about, then let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a cup of coffee or whatever. But I do apologize for anything. So I just mm -hmm. want to have that be on the record. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Okay. So, um, review of bylaw interpretation. Um, that. At the next committee meeting for bylaws, you can make that recommendation. 
Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, I would like Perfect. to discuss the 90 day rule then. Okay. Perfect. So you'll make that recommendation. So that was. Okay, so number three will be a recommendation to bylaws. Number two and number four will we will find privacy documentation or training. And number one, um, formal apology, which I think you just did. So that's been solved. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, and you'll, so are you okay. good with that? Yes. So proud apology. Okay. Have we addressed all your? Yes. Your, okay. Wonderful. So at this time, just so make a resolve. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I would like to make a motion for case one fourteen to be closed, at um with the resolution of a privacy standard document or training, a recommended a uh, recommendation to bylaws for privacy um language, an apology um to Edward Perez, which was done on 1218. We're good? Mm -hmm. I'm second. Beautiful. Okay. Um, but I wanted to address you, Edward, um, about mediation. We can offer that mediation, you know, if you make a complaint and you would like to do mediation. I'd like to offer that. We can offer we can yeah. um add it to the we can add as an option. Yeah, prior right. to actually filing a complaint if you'd like to have mediation. We can and would the, would the but, committee sit in on the mediation? See, that's the thing. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Maybe discuss that further. Um, because this is the this is the avenue that really people. Should, but what they could do is they can make the complaint, and then if they want to choose mediation, they can do so. And I think that's why he asked for guidance in the first right. place. Exactly. So that, so, see, that was my understanding, yeah. and I just thought at that point they should have had a conversation, and he should have disclosed for the first time. That his privacy matter was important to him and he didn't appreciate it being violated. And perhaps an apology could have taken place back then and we could have avoided this process. That right. email to the ethics committee was me and Boy Sam. Right? Yeah, exactly. I got it. And that's what and that's what and that's why I don't want to. That was a good first move. I appreciate that. And I and I don't want to lose that. If people yeah. feel they have a complaint, they should be able to make a complaint. Possible but they can also, you know, you know, I don't want people to feel that they can't voice that. Like with their, maybe that's an option. It's an option. The new form that you did, mm -hmm. you know, would you would you like to do mediation prior to filing an official complaint? And they can check that off as an option, and then we can mm -hmm. we know which way they want to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's seven forty two, and I'm going to move on to the presentation for meeting etiquette. So that hopefully I don't have any more complaints. <laughs> That's my goal. Um, so I'm going to put this on. So, hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Naomi Pemberton, and I wanted to do a meeting etiquette presentation because lately our meetings have been very um, aggressive, loud, no one's hearing each other, and based, to me, very non productive. So, I said to myself, how can I help? What resolution can I try to come up with? And I came up with doing this presentation, something people can maybe refer to, or um, and also to open up the discussion on how we can do things better. Okay. So I, I put this up um, about the presenter. It's on the CB11 website, but I did it as a marketing tool to have our board members complete all the biographies because when you complete the biographies and people look you up and get information about you 
as you're a facilitator, a co-chair, or or um, a leader on the board, people feel they can connect with you in some in some manner. Like I'm from the Bronx. I was born and raised here. You know, I went to New York State schools. I have two children. I have a husband. So sometimes this helps um, people to connect with you and have a feeling. You know, maybe you're from the Van Ness area. You're from Pelham Parkway to connect with you and um, feel confident with um, in your or res build respect for you. So um, I just listed this here. You can read it on the website um, if you want to learn about me and other board members. So today we're going to talk about governance, um, how to have an effective meeting, how to stop meeting ramble, etiquette for community board meetings, how to be quality, uh, how to be a quality meeting facilitator, con con the conduct statement, our conduct statement, and discussion and questions. So here I have a summarized Robert rules. You can obviously. You can also purchase the book on Robert Rules. I gave a link here. Um, this is a Robert Rules that was summarized by Cornell University, and it gives you a one page breakdown on how a meeting should operate. If you, if you can click here, this is a conflict of interest board. You can go on their website. They give you a lot of information. Also, I would suggest signing up for their newsletter. It's it's really, really a good newsletter. It tells you about all the violations and settlements that currently occur. And it's a lot of information on how to really um, look into things that affect the, the community and how um, how it affects you know um, pe people's jobs. Sometimes it affects people's jobs. Sometimes it affects the community, the um, revenue. So it's a very good um, source to go to. Also here I listed the, you can click on it, the open meetings law agency. You can go here and it can provide you information on how to have an open meetings um, within regulation, okay? So I'm not gonna go through that. If you wanna go through that later, we can I know we're up, um, press for time. So here I have a video of an ineffective meeting. And I think sometimes it's good to see how a bad meeting is so that you can see what's wrong with the meeting. Maybe you can, um, when you participate in the meeting, be a better participant. Oh no. Uh -oh. No. <laughs> no, please. No voice? No voice. It you might be mute? because your voice, your volume is low. Okay, let me see. Uh oh. Uh -oh.
Okay. Okay. So, okay. okay. Hold on one second. One second. Okay, so <laughs> what did I say? I think we get the idea. I think we get the idea. Good, you get the idea. Because that's what happens to me sometimes in our meetings. My hands go up to my forehead. I am, you know, I'm just appalled. I am like shocked. So I think um as you can see, the facilitator in this meeting had 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 done the same thing. Everyone was chatting at the same time. People were angry, people were threatening to leave. Um, people were talking about different things rather than the meeting was about transportation. They were talking about other things. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to pre present to you what an ineffective meeting sounds like or looks like or, re or reads like <laughs> mm -hmm. in, some, in some people's cases. Okay, so how can we have an effective meeting? So, first, we want to try to be punctual. You want to read the agenda beforehand. That is so important so that you know exactly what the meeting is about. Come prepared. Come, you know, Edwin today came with his questions. You know, um, Edward came, you know, prepared to answer the questions. Come prepared, as you notice, then the meeting progressive progresses and it's not stagnant so if we come prepared it so it it just helps the meeting go be, be more productive um be an active listener and participant so you're going to listen but if someone is saying something already that you that um you're already going to say that may not be something that you want to repeat you may want to say i agree with you and move on but you can't you know Say, oh, that person said it, then you're repeating what that person said, and then you're going on and on. Say, oh, okay, I agree with Miguel's point. I agree with Bernadette's point. And we move on in the meeting. Follow the meeting rules. So that in every meeting, uh, we have conduct, uh, we have conduct rules, we have a per a facilitator, we have a co-chair or chair. There are rules to that person's meeting. It's important to respect that person and their meeting and follow the rules that they get. So um, speak clearly and effectively. If you're if you have an issue with your voice or you, you know, um, you have a cold or something um, um, going on, then you need to let people know. And that's where that come prepared comes in, right? You come prepared maybe with your statements and ask someone else to read it for you or you submit your statement say i have a cold i can't i can't speak and you submit submit your statements or your thoughts on paper but if you it's important to speak clearly and effectively so that people can hear what you're saying and understand what you're saying ask questions and speak at the appropriate times you, everybody can't ask questions at the same time it has to be one person that asks the questions and speaks at a time. If everyone speaks at the same time, no one can be heard. Then the meeting is not productive and people's viewpoints are not understood or heard. Be patient. If others are speaking, allow them to complete their thoughts. Sometimes, you know, when somebody interrupts you, now you've lost your thought and if your thought is incomplete and then someone's looking at you like, what are you, and you're talking something else and, now <laughs> the person uh, the person doesn't respect what you're saying because it's like all chopped up so allow be patient let the person speak let the person complete their thought wait for your turn to speak it, it's it's courteous to wait for your turn to speak before um don't, to just not blurt whatever you have on your mind outwardly actually see you know read the room see what's going on see who's speaking if someone's speaking wait for your turn to speak don't interrupt interruptions cause people to feel not respected um it also delays moving on in the, the agenda it causes tension between constituents so if i continuously interrupt you the respect that I have 
for you or the contention between us is going to rise. So wait for the person to finish and then you can respond. If you interrupt the person, it causes more anger and frustration between the two people who are speaking. Follow meeting leader rules. So if the person is telling you, the leader is telling you, you only have two minutes left, you only have two minutes left. Usually most leaders who are on these committees, they usually have their certain rules and you pretty much know, you know, you have two minutes to speak. We all kind of follow that two minute rule. So come prepared to speak for two minutes. Follow what the leader is saying. They have to try to get the agenda done. So to, for us to be more productive and have um, and do more for our community, we need people to follow the rules so that everybody gets their viewpoint out and we can have an effective meeting. Be respectful. Notice I star this. Being respectful goes a long way. It allows two individuals or few individuals to have a better relationship. If you continue to be disrespectful to someone, it causes contention. The, the, then the only people that are losing is the community because you're being disrespectful, you're fighting, you're going against each other, and it does not help in terms of getting things done for the community. So I'm gonna see if this plays. I don't know. I think we're what gonna have to mute us on our end. So okay. It an echo. Okay. Try to put it. Let us know if you hear it when the video starts. Just let us know in the chat. On the open the hand corner. Corner, corner, corner. No, 
Okay, now. Should you go to the next slide? Yeah. Okay. So um, that was a very important what the person on the video stated that it's good to just try to move the meeting along when you see that someone is just rambling on and on about a point. Um, it's good to ask questions if we can move the conversation, maybe table the conversation. That way, um, the person doesn't feel like you're just shutting them down, that you're going to hear them at some point. Maybe they can talk about it um, at another time, or they can summarize what they're going to, what or three high points or priority points they want to summarize. And then we can write those down and, you know, and then review those. Um, etiquette for community board meetings. One person at a time should speak. I know I'm being repetitive, but one person at a time should be speaking. Do not interrupt. Let the person speaking finish their thoughts. Refrain from side conversations only when necessary. You should only have those conversations. Pay attention to this person that's speaking because you don't want the point to be say, what did you say? Can you repeat that? Pay, pay attention. I know I do it sometimes and I'm trying to be more conscious of it as well because I may be writing something down and somebody's speaking. So my brain is like focusing on my writing, but try to pay attention to the person that's speaking because that also delays time. Then the person has to repeat themselves and then people will start. They may start talking on the side because they already heard what the person said. Um, be polite, be courteous for community meetings. Come in polite, <laughs> come in knowing that you're going to be courteous. Treating people with respect and being courteous goes a very, very, very long way. People want to be respected. People want to be heard. Um, respect each other's viewpoint. Agree to disagree. I think this is something that we really need to work on. We can agree on something and we can disagree on something. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be the end all that um, everyone agree with you. Okay, we can agree to disagree. And sometimes we need to just say that we can agree to disagree. We're on different sides of the coin. But we agree to disagree. Pay attention to the person. Again, I say, pay attention to the person that's speaking. See what see, understand where they're coming from. Tips for hosting community public meetings. Set time limits. This helps foster a culture of respect to all the individuals who, who are participating. If you don't respect people's time, people get frustrated. So you want to make sure that you as a facilitator or, or if you're having a public meeting that you're setting time limits and everyone is their time is being respected and you're acknowledging that their time is being respected. Explain the, the process, make sure individuals understand the rules and hold them accountable. So sometimes we have meetings and people are not held accountable, so they feel that they can just continue, continue, continue to do it over and over again. So you have to, you know, of course, respect, respectively, respectfully hold them accountable. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be nasty, but hold people accountable and say, that's against the rules. Please stop what you're doing. Um, listen to the person speaking. This shows that you respect the person and what they have to say. Sometimes we're not listening to each other. So that person that's speaking feels that you don't respect what they're saying. So then they become more aggressive and more angry. So you want to make sure you acknowledge that you hear it, heard what the person is saying, and that you that you show respect to that person. Sometimes you, that person is not going to be happy with your answer, but that's where you agree to disagree, right? No personal attacks. Stick to the facts and resolution of the pro of the problem. There's no reason in a public meeting or a community meeting we should be personally attacking each other. The meeting is for the community and community business. So we should be keeping focus on that point. 
watch your body language. So if you're, you're sitting here, you're going like this, you're on your phone, you're over here, that does, that's also showing a disrespectful, um, that you're being disrespectful to the person who's speaking or the person who's facilitating the meeting. Ask questions or statements related to the discussion only. Don't, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm happy you may like tomato soup or you like cats, but try to keep to the discussion at hand. That also helps the meeting to move forward. I have another video. Um, Serena had mm -hmm. asked if we can have this forwarded. I told her we can ask Jeremy to forward it. So I think we maybe just give them the gist about the video since they can't really hear it. Oh, okay. And then they can watch it on their own time. Okay. So um, how to be a quality meeting facilitator, basically discuss how to um, come into your meeting confident as a facilitator or co-chair or chair, come into your meeting confident, come with an agenda, let people know your rules up front, you know, so there will be two minutes of talking. There will be, um, you know, there will be a, uh, 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 I guess a recession, like if you, um, what's it called? A session? Intermission. Intermission. Thank you. I'm trying to think of the word. Intermission where maybe there'll be a break. Sometimes also, um, I'm learning, especially even in my career, um, sometimes people need a break. <laughs> Maybe we need, you know, maybe sometimes people, we need to do a one minute, you know, two minute break so that people can collect themselves and come back. Um, she also talks about um, just um, coming prepared, um, coming on time, gaining people's respect, and, um, you know, really taking control of the meeting. If it goes off to the what we call the left or go off, off, off topic to make sure that you bring it back to the topic at hand. So here I list the, I'm going into the um, conduct statement. I list the conduct statements and bullet points. Um, but I, what I did also is I broke it apart here because sometimes people see all of the list and they get confused. So I, broke it apart for people so that you can read it side by side. I'm not going to read it out to you because every it's on the CB11 website, mm -hmm. but this is something that you can print and have it for yourself so you know exactly each con each conduct statement and what our rules are in terms of respecting one another. So here I wanted to stop and I really wanted some feedback on what we can do to be to have better meetings to have more productive meetings if you feel the meetings are going fine you can tell me that too um but i really was looking um for this point in time of the of the presentation to get some some feedback or have some discussion about about improving our meetings i do like a lot of your suggestions i think oh, they're gonna they're gonna work effectively especially since our meetings seem to go out almost to midnight lately so we really do need to cut that down a lot <laughs> agreed i'd like to say that anybody that, <laughs> that needs to see an effective meeting come to one of the nails <laughs> oh, thank you well, thank you and uh, yeah. mm -hmm. yes indeed friend yeah. cynthia has i can't see it here but it said cynthia had her hand up Hi, was that for me? I'm sorry. Yes. Hi, guys. Um, Naomi, thank you for that PowerPoint. It was um, very, very well put together. Um, just two points that I would like to just um, in terms of being mindful when going into meetings is um, active listening is one of them. Um, it's really important that when we're listening, that we're actually hearing to listen and not necessarily to respond. In other words, you know, it's not about like, oh God, in the back of my head, I'm hearing somebody speak and when are they going to be done so that I can just throw my point out there. Active listening is something that um, we all can benefit from really, really practicing. Um, the second thing I wanted to say was um, the importance of leaving our egos at 
at the door. I think one of the things that often happens is that it becomes a battle of the wills and people are more interested in being right and kind of having a one up or something like that. And it's important to just acknowledge to ourselves that, you know, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about him or her, but it's about the topic at hand and, and doing the work that we need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to also mention some things I saw at the, um, the last full board meeting. Um, there were some people speaking and there were some people speaking and um they um they were asked to leave or um they said i'm going to leave and there were and people said leave <laughs> and um you know things like that should not be happening every you know this is a community board meeting everyone has the right to be there i just want to state this for the record that everyone has the right to be at the meeting nobody should be told to leave because you disagree with their point of view um, I think that you um, people have to be mindful of what you're saying um, and because that type of language or anything disrespectful to someone because you disagree with what they're saying um, can cause people to be angry and more um, aggressive. And so that's not what we want out of our meetings. We want to have a good meeting, a good productive meeting. And, you know, those types of um, behavior should not be um, tolerated. Also, giving um, one of our conduct statements, and, and you can read it on your own, is about misinformation. So I want to highlight this because it's very important not to provide or put out information that's not correct, right? No one wants to be held to um to a a, a a a community board and be told that they are not this or that and it's false information if you have information about someone go through the proper channels do not go to the full board meeting where we're trying to make motions on community related work I think you I think we need to make sure that people understand that what's the what is the full board meeting for? <laughs> the full board meeting is to get work done for the community, not to tr basically I, I want to say in, in, in regular words, trash people, right? This is not time to trash people, talk about people. This is a time to do community business. So just be very careful about misinformation or else you'll end up here at at the, at the ethics and disciplinary committee and that's what i'm trying to avoid i don't want anyone to end up here i want to be able to do some real um ethics and disciplinary um presentations have more people you know from the community legal commit legal community hospital you know health community come in and talk about ethics rather than have people here if you know in a case <laughs> so um just try to be um, mindful when you're at the full board meeting. We're all there for the same cause, which is our community. We are passionate. I know um, Bernadette is very passionate about Van Ness. I've been knowing her for the time I've been on this board. <laughs> She's very, very um, passionate about her community. And so am I about um, the Northeast Bronx. And um, Brady Corp, um, and Jeanette. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. And um, so I just want to make sure people understand um, that you have to, we need to just make sure that when we're coming to the meeting, we have the right mindset in terms of what our agenda is and what's the work we have to do. Thank you. Go ahead. I think that if we made some adjustments mm -hmm. that we could have a more effective meeting, I, I would suggest that we should know beforehand what our process is going to be. Okay. For example, I think the meeting should start on time. Mm -hmm. I think that if we need a verbal roll call, that should automatically happen so that we can avoid discussing it for 20 minutes before mm -hmm. it happens. It mm -hmm. will save time. 
I think that we might want to look at the structure. If we perhaps had the committee's report and even the new and old business prior to the gallery session, some of the gallery sessions questions might have been answered, which yes. could also save time. And the other suggestion that I have is that when a rule is made, mm -hmm. whether it's that the gallery session is going to be for this amount of time, or you have two minutes, or you have to register beforehand, mm -hmm. then those rules should be followed and yes. not be discussed at every single meeting for the same individuals who violate. Agreed. So Everybody I should think, be held accountable. I think that yeah. we should have a clearer process and structure. Mm -hmm. I think that we might want to redesign our agenda. And I think that we want, might want to do something different so that we can simply have an effective meeting where we're hitting all of the topics that are important and that it's not going on until 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Um, because that can be very difficult, especially for the people that are there in person who then have to navigate getting home and for those who have, you know, work the next day. But I think that there are things that we can put in place that's all have to do with structure to make structure. it move yeah. better. I, I agree. One thing I just wanted to clarify was the, the gallery used to be at the end, but we had a lot of pushback from the public saying that they did not get a chance to speak about stuff before we made motions which is why we moved it to the beginning. So anybody that wants to speak on a certain subject, they can do so, especially if it's on the agenda that a motion is being made. They want to be heard before we do the motions. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. the motions are part of the committee reports, mm -hmm. which is why we put them at the end. So that's just something I just want to let you know. It was at one point mm -hmm. they were at the end, but we got pushed back from it. So we moved it to the front so the public could be heard. So I have a question. Can we, um, those that sign up, for a particular motion, like if they're going to speak to a particular motion, can they just sign up for that particular motion and speak before then? I mean, that's something we could speak about in leadership if we want to try and restructure how it's done. Because yeah. I think we need, we would need to get more people some thoughts and ideas into it first. Yeah, maybe we could make it more focused so that because then sometimes it go the gallery goes on to a different all kinds of different subjects. <laughs> So maybe if we can do that, but like we can people, talk about it. Some people sign up with just like community CB11 issues. So it's, right. kind of, it's kind of hard to nail that down. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say quickly, you know, with regards to, you know, just like, um, I think it's important for the chairs of the committees to, to know that it's incumbent on them to run the meeting. I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many times I've heard, you know, other people will be like, is anybody running this meeting? Are they going to still let her talk? You know, like what's going on? You know, like why is it, you know, why is it okay for this one and not okay for that one, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And so I think it's it's important to remind the chairs, first of all, that they are the ones that actually have to enforce the rules, but also that, um, you know, if that's not happening, they have to, you know, other people have to be like, hey, you know, speak up, be like, no, she can't talk for 10 minutes or no, he can't, you know, say that to her, you know, like whatever. It just, it, it, it seems like there are, everybody has their, their own strengths and weaknesses, but you know, it's, it's important for the, the chairs to know that they don't have to let their meeting run on. Right. Like you could just say, Hey, well, if we, we should be in control of our meeting and not the other way. Around. Yeah. Right. Because that happens a lot. But, uh, but I think sometimes, too, we also have to build a level of respect, a, a culture of respect for the community and for what they say, what they say to us, and um, also respect for us as community board members. That, I feel, is lacking. There should be more respect between, we, we are appointed to this position to speak for them, for the community. So the community should respect us enough <laughs> and we should respect them. Right, it has to be an open communication. Nobi, I, I wanna bring up a subject. Right? Mm -hmm. um, a person can be removed for cause. I think we need to do a better job in defining cause mm -hmm. because a disagreement about somebody's view is not cause. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think we need to examine uh, what uh, we mean by the word cause uh, and, and, and what, what 
defines cause to bring it to a level where it's entertained by the board. Because we can have, because you can move a board in a direction and, and the outcome may not be favorable without having cause. Mm. So we need to be able to define what cause is as we move forward. Yeah. And I think that that would help mm -hmm. uh, keep, keep people uh, focused on the needs of the community and not, not uh, uh, certain individuals. You want to take your presentation? Okay? And and there's and there's two other issues and there's two other issues that I um, I want to just make clear. Um, and I've heard these conversations about conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. A conflict of interest is when you are in jeopardy or when you have something to gain, monetary gain. And I've heard conversations about well, you know, um, in Congress or in the political process. You can argue, you can argue a case and then turn around and vote on it. Well, but yet we neglect the fact that our, our court system, which is the, which is fairness and justice, uh, they have the appearance of, of impropriety, where uh, based on a discussion, you can you can uh, you can tell what the outcome is going to be. Can imagine me defending a client, making my arguments. And once I'm done, I get behind the judges, I sit in the judge's chair and then decide on my own judgment. That is an appearance of impropriety. It makes no sense. So we should not be using whether it's a conflict of interest because that deals with a monetary gain. Mm -hmm. And we should not use the Senate or the Congress of what they do and neglect to uh, use the court system and their process, which is fairness and justice. So my point is we should not allow anyone who has, especially on the ethics committee, uh, bring up a, a, a complaint mm -hmm. and then uh, rule on that complaint because you can tell what the outcome is going to be. So I think in our description, we talk about the, uh, um, uh, um, the uh, disclosures, but let's also add to there the appearance of impropriety. Okay, so I just wanna speak to you on this because I, I agree to disagree with you. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel we are not a court of law. We are a community board that are voices of the community. Indeed. So we are make if someone um, on the committee or anyone makes a complaint and they have, as long as it's not financial, they have the interest in that situation. They should be able to vote on that situation because if, if you're taking away that person's voice in on an issue that's affecting the community, that's not fair. If you want, if you want to look at, if you want to look at Trump, at the the Trump um, impeachment that came up last mm -hmm. year or two years ago, the people that made the complaint voted on Trump. So if we want to look at the the system or how mm -hmm. we, you know, and those mm -hmm. are people that are commute that are voted by the community. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, I disagree with you. Agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have your opinion. That's, mm -hmm. that's your opinion. And also, the full board did vote on that. So, see, that's my concern, Naomi. Uh, let me just let me just uh, read the definition of of uh, the appearance of impropriety. Mm -hmm. An appearance of impropriety is is tested when a covered person will or may take a direct official action that, although not constituting a conflict of interest, will or may create a reasonable perception that the covered person's ability to carry out his or, or her or official duties with integrity, impartiality, and competency is impaired. So, and in the conflict of interest uh, definition deals with a member may not vote on any matter that could result in a personal and direct economic gain uh, for themselves or any associate, uh, associated person, business, or nonprofit organization. So, th there's a distinction between the two. Okay, but that. But that's different, and why I say that's different. So let's. I live. I live in. Um, I live in. Um, I live. I'm trying to like. So I'm mm -hmm. give up my address. But I live, no, don't, don't. I live, your neighborhood. I live in my neighborhood. Your neighborhood. I, yeah. I, okay. I live on Boston Road. I live on Boston Road. On Boston Road, a liquor store wants to come up. Right. I say no because I'm. But I live in that area. I live in that area and I say no. Okay. Now my my um my brother owns the store. I say no. Should my vote still not count? That's 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 a whole different. I'm, 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 that's okay. different. That's different. That, that's, Should my vote still not count? 
He's answering. Okay, go ahead. That, that's completely different. Why? Because you're not the one raising a complaint against someone. And yeah, then the going... rules change. The rules change when you're talking about an ethics complaint. That's different than making a decision about whether it's a conflict of interest. Because apparently that liquor store or that grocery store, there's a monetary gain involved. Now that's a right, conflict but of interest. Gain to my brother, but that's, but that's a conflict of interest. But not no, to but, me. But no, but there, there's a relationship there. Still you still have a voice. But if you directly uh, have has something to gain, now that's a conflict of interest. But a, a appearance of impropriety is so in the you, absence of a, of a conflict of interest, do the outcome can right, still be? So, so where does the committee member have something to gain? The committee the committee members should not be involved in voting in a complaint that they themselves raise. That doesn't make sense. We're still that's, doesn't that's make still, sense. yeah because you're you're the one that's raising the, you're raising a concern, and you're the voice. You're one of the voices. If it if it's not if it if it if it's not valid, then the full board will shoot it down. Trust me. But this Trust is an me. ethics committee. Trust me. Huh? So I am a little confused as to how we got here because we were discussing the meeting. Yes. Right. No. I, it was I just would been... like to say one thing, and if this is perhaps I am confused, mm -hmm. but I feel that being a member of the community board, I'm not. Representing just Jeanette Wilson, I got right. on the community board because I wanted to represent my community, which means that I feel that presence each time I make a decision because I am the voice of my community who could not get on the board. So that being said, that is how I feel about my position mm -hmm. on the board. In terms of the appearance of impropriety, I think that at this point, the amount of debate, I'm not going to use the word argument that we have done, the amount of debate and discussion and even training that we have done over conflict of interest is giving an interesting appearance mm -hmm. of impropriety because if a member of our board does something that is objectionable or questionable or in violation and a grievance, a complaint is brought against and you then represent your community and vote on it, I think that that is not the appearance of impropriety, but the appearance of you are doing your job for the people you came on this board to represent. And what I would love to see so that we would not have the appearance of impropriety is whether it is a person in a position of power or just a regular board member, when you do something that you just know, is unethical and is improper to simply take accountability for it, say I'm sorry, say I will try to do better, mm -hmm. not try to excuse it ad nauseum. You are on this board. You are not here just as an individual. You are on this board to represent the community. When you make a mistake, and we all will make mistakes because we're all human, own up to that mistake, take ownership and move on. That this board has gotten to where it is where we are a joke. Mm -hmm. We are basically a joke. And where everyone talks about it. Whether not even just to this one borough outside of the other boroughs. Where is our pride in turning this around and saying, no, we're better than that. Yeah. We are going to resolve this and take care of it and move forward and not discuss and, de and debate it ad nauseum, actually do something about it. Every member that is saying whatever your title is as a member of this community board, take that ownership, right. take that accountability, and move forward. Right. That is all I wanted to say. Miguel? Um, I just think that... Uh, as an example, there there have been two votes. The one of them was um, my my ethics uh, 
vote. I chose to remove myself from voting on that. Okay. And so there's there's the the you know, so that it did not appear exactly improper. Okay. There uh Veronica did the same on, on something else. And so there's there's something to there's something to be said about you know making a choice not to vote on your own you know on your own cases or you know if, if it's something deeply personal in that in that sense but there is also something to be said about you know there's i think it really has to be a judgment call on on people's you know it's just be fair like you know don't vote if it's actually going to you know like get you out of trouble you know mm -hmm. Um, but again, if there's a, a liquor store or, you know, anything else, if it's something like that, where you're not really, you know, it's not like a big, huge thing. I think it's, I think it might be better that we police ourselves and just be like, Hey, dude, you can't vote on that. That's exactly the point. I think the committee should decide whether that person should not participate or vote on, on a, on a complaint that they themselves filed. But then if it does come to, if it does come this, this the, is this is ethics committee. The other the other the other side of that is that anything that comes out of here is just a suggestion. The entire the full board is going to be voting on it anyway. And I I think that maybe if if it's a very close full board vote, then then we can talk about whether it was fair for that person to to have voted. But if it if it goes you know overwhelmingly one way or the other, there's really not any question. So it's kind of beating a dead horse. I just feel and well, every person's vote should count. Mm -hmm. it, like you said, if that person fails to recuse themselves, then that person mm -hmm. fails to recuse themselves. And they feel they feel that they're not gonna fairly vote. If you feel you're not gonna fairly vote, then you should recuse yourself. Maybe that can go to bylaws that that be a recommendation. Okay, thank you, but we agree to disagree. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for bringing your point up. I appreciate it because it's good to talk about stuff. Um, okay. Do we have gallery session or do we have gallery session? Yes, we can have, um, we can have gallery session. I don't know who registered though. No one registered. Diana, oh, no. just raised your hand. Has a hand raised. Diana? Yes, hi everyone. <laughs> Um, could you give me the 30 second warning, please? Sure. Uh, Hold on one second, Diana. Okay. I'm going to set up our clock. One sorry. I forgot to bring my phone. Your phone. The hard one's time. Ready? Go. Okay. Uh, thanks. I really appreciate the discussion tonight. I think one thing that also might help is to state at the beginning of the meeting what the shared purpose of the meeting is. You know, like we're here tonight to try to reach a consensus about X, or we're here tonight to see how we can best improve sanitation for the community. I think then people would have something to like work towards together it might really help. Um, but I also wanted to ask about social media, because I think that there's things that are going on on social media that are really contributing to the tensions on the board. Um, and I'm not sure what the board is in a position to do about it. But for instance, posts about board meetings, like video of the board are blurred freeze frame, labeled a crude gesture when you should it be is just a very fast gesture like that. Um, I think those accusations were very harmful and someone should have said something about it. Um, in the Citizens of Community Board 11 group, um, community members are calling each other lunatics. Um, okay. I've, it, you know, I've been called a troll. I've been accused of having no friends and being lonely. Um, and that's just not right. Um, 30 seconds. A board member saying that um, someone who, a board member saying that people who re registered to speak and make, you know, ethics complaints following the board rules were making disgusting attacks 
they were going by the board rules, board decorum, board procedures. And then on the chair's personal page, um, just recently allowing a comment where somebody's uh, saying these new board members don't have a pot to piss in. Uh, um, we should see our bank account statements before they could become a board member. Sorry, Diana, you've reached time. Robert, okay, not some Christine is next on my personal page. Christine, go would ahead. Would you like to? Would you like to give her an extra minute to explain no, that? There's no, nothing that said that. Do you want? Do you want her to explain it or? No, I don't want. No, I know it's not on there. Robert had his hand up. And well, Christine, well, Christine has her hand up, but it's down again. So I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Put me on hold. I I would like to speak, but I, I'll let Robert go first. Oh, okay. You can go first. You're a board member. No, that's okay, Robert. All right, I'll be quick. You don't have to time me, Miguel. Uh, many board members need to follow the BP's code of conduct, cut out the jokes, and better training, which was done in the past, of board members needs to be done. That's it. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Christine, you wanted to talk? Um, yes, I just wanted to agree with Diana on her assessment about what's happening on social media. Um, I have seen those comments and uh, she is correct. And if she wants to elaborate, I think you should let her elaborate um, because I think that it is adding to the tension. Um, and I think that, that yeah, it, this is probably a good time to address it. So these are board members and community members. Um, maybe we need to talk about uh, maybe at the next bylaws meeting, someone can recommend a social media policy for community board members. Mm -hmm. That's just a thought I have. Um, I don't know if anyone else have any yeah, thoughts. I do what I do. Don't deal. The only thing that I can see there being an issue with is us maybe violating people's rights to free speech. Right. So that's yeah. something. I mean, they like before. Maybe people need to police themselves. Who's the problem? Um, saying, but we can't tell people they can't post on Facebook. I think that would be a violation of their. But I want. I know. I know it's a job. But I know our jobs. Like if if we do certain things on social media, we can be removed. You know. So. If we can maybe put some guidance, maybe that guidance, guidance would be a good idea. I think we can control what community members say, but I think that there should be some guidelines for actually community mm -hmm. board members. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because silent, like, we would be able to stop them. Yeah. 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 Maybe some people need to. Like, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know why you would put a post like that on your social media when you know that anyone could read it. And once it's out there, it's out there. And, and if if that has continued, and from what I have heard at other board meetings that it has happened in the past, it, it has to stop if we're going to really come together and be a more effective board. Yeah. Like you can't yeah. be attacking one another either at the meetings or on social media because it's just there and it's in print for everyone to see. I'm going to go ahead and ask Diana um, to explain as a member of the committee. As the chair, it's up to Naomi if she wants to allow her to continue speaking. I don't want to um, perpetuate this. No, no. <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> de escalate things. I, I just think that I, I, I think that maybe if she didn't make it personal, what to make it. Uh, but she already has a yeah. good point. I, I'm, sure. I really don't. I want us to come out of here with candy canes and happy. So I'm, I your mean, teeth are so yeah. I want some food. So <laughs> because I think that's where that's going. Yeah, it's gonna, and... gonna go. I don't want it. To, I don't want. I don't want this meeting to be about brow beating right now. I I want to take the suggestion, which I think is a great uh, suggestion from Christine and Diana, that we need to do something about social media. I like that. Mm -hmm. And let's try to put something forward to bylaws or, or whatever other um, avenue we can take, so that we can um, 
have some guidance on social media so that people understand what they should be posting on their social media and what's a, what should be a, a, um, acceptable. I know, I know I have to do it for my job. I, I, I can't. <laughs> they, they look for anything. Who so. is the chair of social media? Committee? Christine has her hand up. Oh, I see Mr. Yeah. Peterson, so. Christine? Okay, I just, yeah, I, I, oh. I just, just to remind people that um, what Diana Finch is talking about um, is, you know, being um, done on a official CB11 um, um, page. Not, not on the, you know, not on a board member's personal page, not on a community member's page, but on the CB11 um, official Facebook group. Actually, <clears throat> that that Facebook group became unofficial. Uh, I believe it was okay. earlier this year, late last year. Yeah, it's unofficial. And citizens is supposed to be the official Correct. one. Correct. Yeah. So, like I said, I think I think you you guys have a great idea, and I would like to move on that train of a guidance to community board members. Somebody and wrote, community. Someone wrote here. I saw it a minute ago. Bob mm -hmm. Press that the world president has um, guidelines. I think. Oh, for wonderful. Social media. So that's something we can look into wonderful. and incorporate it into our own yeah. uh, community uh, board. Thank you, Bob. Is <laughs> that good information? Okay. Um, is that anybody? Um, Cynthia? Oh, Cynthia. She just. No, sorry. No. I forgot to put my hand down. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks. I think that's it for everybody. Anyone else? Uh, Jane wanted to. Oh. I, first, this is a great, healthy conversation. It feels really good to, uh, to be here. It oh, looks good. so great job. Um, I want to talk more on the ethics, not the disciplinary. You know, if I was to say and cry about everything that someone wrote about me on Facebook, uh, we'd be here pretty much every day. But um, I do want to talk about uh, a practice of scope, um, which is an ethic violation. And I know it was done unintentionally, and I'm going to talk with the uh, the member offline. But uh, a business and an organization needs to feel safe and comfortable to come to the community board with an idea or request a permit. Without that board member uh, proposing or suggesting that the idea be shopped around, uh, it could lead to a conflict of interest. I'm not suggesting that it was at this point because I'm 95% positive it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, but when when a, a community member is requesting a permit, as I did, um, and and especially and we can talk in in length the uh, the scope of what the community board does. It's not the the purview. Not within the scope of the community board to go and and find other bidders or or right. ideas. It's it's equivalent to if someone was coming for a cannabis license in a great location that you said, "Wait, well, hold on, hold on, I might know someone that can do the job a little bit better." So I want that to to permeate. I want to have the the full mm -hmm. discussion and um and move forward from I'm, it. I'm sorry, I did, I'm just a little confused. You applied for. Permit for your business? No, no, we're just we're, we're not going to go into the, that. I'm I'm just talking about the uh, what the the board needs to uh, be focused on, right. and that's the the scope, the practice right. of scope of what the community board does, and uh, how to carry it forward when someone does come requesting okay. a permit or an exploratory the structure. Of how I agree okay. with that. I saw that um, video. Yes, because and there's no animosity towards. No, no, no. That's a great point. No, that's a great point. Mr. Perez has his head up too. And oh, I'm sorry, one second. I just I want to just state Can that that on social media. No, 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 no. This is a this is presented at the leadership I think uh -huh. meeting. Okay. So, but I want to hold on to, to that point that I, as we work to be a better board, that we do try to be a little bit more structured on how we respond to the community. <laughs> and. I, that's all I have to say. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I will just say that um, when we're listening to members of the community, businesses, trade associations, nonprofits, whoever, um, just like the city has a request for a proposal or a request for information, mm -hmm. basically that's what I had um, mentioned that day, an RFP, some sort of, of process that gives it, you know, an equitable Mm -hmm. an inclusive process 
for not just one organization to control that plaza mm -hmm. or any plaza, right? Because if we're talking about a permanent, uh, you know, materials or something that is permanent there, mm -hmm. um, and somebody has strict control over it, we should explore or give other people the opportunity. But, you know, um, Jane, I mean, I do have a roadmap that I wanted to discuss with you because you're running out of time. Um, I'm not going to blurt out the date, but, you know, I do want to talk to you about it. But again, it was no animosity towards, you know, these, but it is, it is a, a legality issue that I want to prevent mm -hmm. uh, right, from, mm -hmm. from occurring so, from anybody. So, because I was the one that made the comment and you're making it a legality or you're referencing a legality issue, mm -hmm. I have to ask you, when you say legality issue, is it financial? Is it? Like, what, what is the legality issue? Because if I need to go ahead and contact my lawyer in the morning, I want to be sure what is it that you're telling me? This is a personal. Yeah. 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 This is not. You know, you know, you know, you probably call your lawyer. Okay. All right. Well, right. We're going to have to hold yeah. right now on that because that's our. It's not. I got it. Within our I, I hear. But I'm, I'm talking about general context. We have to be um, careful how mm -hmm. we approach. Yeah, that's the, something maybe you guys can talk offline right, together. Yeah. Before was, you go to that level that it just started to rise to. Right. Maybe I mean, I asked him, he just said what I should do. So, you know, no, no, no. I think he told me what he wanted to take it. No, so you raised it though. So. Yeah, you well, no, he mentioned the legality portion yeah, and I asked him to but, clarify. But, so, this is you know, the ethics but, committee. But, this is but, not the you guys committee. Right. I think I think you two gentlemen are very intelligent. Yeah. And I think that you guys can have a conversation. Like yeah. Oh, yeah, we can. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I don't and think it has to go to this level. I think we just need to have a discussion. That's just my opinion. I don't think it's, yeah, I think, you know, so this wall just yeah. went up suddenly and I think you guys can go get over those walls and just sit down and talk. I think it would be a good idea. But I just want to pull from what um, you stated, which is we need to be better about responding. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> um. Okay. Okay. So, uh, did did we want to vote on the motion that I'm going to make to leadership about the case one fourteen? Yes. Yeah, so we just did the the me. You made the motion. I second it, but we haven't voted on it yet. Okay. So, um, all those opposed to the to the motion to bring to leadership for um, privacy and standard document training, recommendation um, to bylaws for um, language around privacy, and apology, well, the apology was done, so I don't know if you wanna bring that as a resolution, but anyone, anyone opposed to that? Everyone agrees. Wonderful. Wow, unanimous. I love it. No abstentions. No abstentions. No. Okay, great. Then we are good. Okay. Any old business? Okay. I don't think we have any. Yeah. Um, new business. Um, I sent everyone a new form that I would like to be added to our website as a replacement to our current complaint form. It's more user friendly. Um, so I'd like to have that. And we have a new case and for January 22nd. In case anybody wants to look at it, I have two copies. Oh, nice. Thank you. I just have a quick question. The, the one that you sent me, mm -hmm. is, it'll be it'll be editable online, right? Yeah. Okay, great. You can even do it on your phone. I was I, I just it. didn't. I'm so happy. I, when I opened it up, I yeah. tried to because I wanted to play with it, yeah. and it didn't work. So it's I just your phone? Uh, yeah, on my iPad. Oh, yeah, iPad. Yeah, so like I couldn't, I couldn't edit Can you it. Download it. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, I just wanted to make sure that it would be edit, the form would be editable on yeah. the website. You okay, can, so you could do that. You and can put whatever information. You don't have to. You don't have to, okay. you don't have to make another additional Fantastic. paper <laughs> to fill it out. I was very. Actually, I was very upset that I was filling out this um, complaint, and it was it was it was crazy. You know, so I said, if that's the if that's what the community is experiencing, that's terrible. I haven't thoroughly looked at it. But, mm -hmm. um, two things that I would suggest, just, and I, again, mm -hmm. I haven't thoroughly looked at it, is adding that mediation um, option oh, to the top, and also changing the information at the top. Also, which which information? Yes, me. No, no, sorry. 
this? Chairman Aldia. Oh, God. <laughs> that's that's from I think when it was first put together. So we just have to update that. Okay. Well, maybe we should take that stuff for. I don't know. I don't think it's not that they're good to be there. So things change, you know. I think we have. Or do we? Is it? Do we usually? That, we usually have something on there on any kind of communication mm -hmm. of those three points. Mm -hmm. I was too busy trying to play with the phone. Mm -hmm. I was that. So add mediation and take this off. Yeah. We don't have to vote on that, right? The adding the mediation. But are, are we okay with the form being like once I do that? Are we all okay? Yeah, I don't know if we have, I don't know if Jeremy's on, but I don't know if that's if. The board has to vote on the new form letter, or if that's something that could just be done by the ethics committee. But we that's what I'm saying. As a committee, do we have to vote on the the new I form? Think, I mean, we could reason. we could ask this to have it sent to the full board, mm -hmm. and then we could bring it up at the full board meeting and see, at least okay. bring their attention to it so they could look mm -hmm. at it and then make any suggestions. Okay. Now, I have I have a question. Sure. Uh, on the on the one two three four the fifth paragraph. Yeah, uh, the committee has 90 days from date of ethics. I don't think minute. that's the same one, but no, no, because the format is different. Oh, yes. That's the old. That's the old. Yeah, the that committee has 90 yeah. days from the date of the ethics committee hearing and um, to, be um, to review each complaint. At the beginning of its investigation. So I, at what point, when do we decide whether a case is worth being heard by the ethics committee? To allow it to go into the investigative process, because when we first started this committee, mm -hmm. we used to get the complaints, and if if the complaint didn't warrant any further action, we would dismiss it and right. close so, the hearing. So, so we did an email about four months ago. Mm -hmm. What was it? Four or five months ago. Yeah. As long as it's a violation, if the the complaint has a vi you know, points out the violation, which it that it states, mm -hmm. and it meets that guidelines, we should. We hear we hear the case, so we can. When we when you say we, do we decide? Yeah, he meets the he meets the standard, or does one person make that decision? We get we get a summary. We get yeah, a summary, we then, summary. We, then we then we vote on it. Yeah, we vote okay. on it. Yeah, because I didn't get a chance. I, I didn't see any. I didn't see that at one fourteen or some of the others. It just came. no. It just comes because if it's a violation of a, if it's a violation, if it meets the violation of what I outlined about. Mm -hmm. Seven months ago. Seven months ago. If it meets that violation, then it moves on, and we can hear the case. And because it's a violation of one of the okay, so um, I think so it'll help if you're yeah. like you get arrested. Right now you're going to the... you'll get arraigned. It's on. Uh, so that's why it's important that we define what cause is. Okay. Uh, because uh, you know we shouldn't be moving yeah, straight forward unless there's a cause for it. Yeah, and there there is a guideline. Okay. There's a deadline. I mean, I read, yeah. I remember getting the mm -hmm. the summary of my case, and I didn't know right. about it. Because what happens? He had voted on all of those. Remember, he had to be heard. Those cases to be to be heard. To be yeah. heard. Just where, like it was like. Yeah. But, but, but we should all. But we should always do that. We should always look at a case and determine whether there's a final pressure mean, case that for us to move forward, and then. Listen to the case because there could be something in there that, that we say, well, you know, in this case we need to ask further questions before we we decide to move forward on it. Yeah, I disagree with that because we also get some, pointed out violation. We I'm get afraid of that. We get like a million. Of, you that, know, we, we get a lot of complaints that are, oh well, she said this about me, so right. I mean, it's yeah. really and those get and those get dismissed. They yeah, can't be heard. That's what yeah. I'm saying. So but there needs to be a, a review, review. If you process. wanted, if you wanted to. I mean, if you want to review every single case, I mean, there are some that are just blatantly not. Okay. You know, it doesn't meet the it doesn't meet it's the, it's a, the kind of a standards of a of a violation. But I guess the ones that we we decide to move forward, we should we should talk about those. Oh, sure. I don't know. What do you <laughs> no, mean? does everybody? Think? I mean, it just. I don't know because we yeah I said the guidelines. Yeah, that was. I thought them that yeah. So if it meets the, if it meets the guidelines, we all voted on it. Um, if it meets the guidelines, if it meets. The guidelines, then it goes forward. If it doesn't, if it's like, um, what was it? Somebody said like they don't like my hair, and it doesn't go forward because mm -hmm. that doesn't meet 
doesn't that's not a violation against the community. But my, my question, who decides that? What well, I, I just if it if it doesn't if it doesn't if I'm correct the correct Naomi, criteria that seven months forward. ago when you sent out those guidelines, mm -hmm. we all voted on it. Mm -hmm. So it was clear which cases would move forward and which would not. Correct. And we haven't gotten anything outside of those things anymore. Like we haven't like yeah. we haven't received Same. any anything outside so of the basically guidelines. anything that we that was outside of the ones that were backlogged right. have not met any of the guidelines that they shouldn't move forward. Right. Right. Okay, so I guess the question is if something is not received that meets those guidelines that probably shouldn't go forward. Is that brought before the committee so we can make that decision? That's what I'm saying. Committee, we need to make a decision as a committee to move forward. Chair. We did. We made a decision as a committee that if it didn't. So I think the point being you, I mean, Ellie, you were on the, you were on the committee at that time. Sure. We voted all together. Perhaps you weren't at that meeting, but we voted that there were certain types of cases that would be deemed valid by the chair and um certain ones that you know wouldn't if you'd like to see anything that gets kicked out then that's great but i don't think that we should but she shared if something gets kicked out yeah i guess you know like it's naomi sends it and she says she doesn't feel that this is something that needs to go forward um, and somebody in the committee doesn't feel the same way that could be brought up for discussion at that time. Yeah. You know, because we we do we do see as a committee we do see every complaint that comes in. So you know, it's there's. I, just I guess maybe if you get the if you. So Ellie, if you, we do get every complaint that does come in. So if you find that something has not been you know a complaint that you think maybe has some validity doesn't you know doesn't come up then yeah, i guess you could say something i mean i know that we just got one a couple months ago that was so ridiculous i kind of fell out of my chair so it was that you know like it, it's no big deal to me that it didn't you know that it didn't come up right the only reason why we were doing we were doing that before was because we had such a we had such a backlog but well, we when we first started the committee though we didn't, that's how we we didn't have a guidance at the time. A complaint Huh? Well, we, well, we first started this, the, this, uh, the other committee, no matter if you have one or 50 complaints, the process was the same. We would look at the complaint and determine as a committee whether it should move forward no, or dismiss. We, we changed the process because we changed that process because it was duplicate work. How is it duplicate? Because if it doesn't have any, if it doesn't match, okay, it's supposed to come here if it's a complaint mm -hmm. that is against the community, right. not about someone's hair, nails, um, perfume. They, they told me, you know, I had a bad cop, you know, mm -hmm. what I said was stupid. That's not a complaint. That, that's opinion. Right. That's opinion. But if you're violating one of the codes, like, you know, you're sharing emails, you're doing, you know, you, you're um, mm -hmm. stealing money. You're, I, I have the guideline. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was sent to everybody. It was sent to everybody. So if we're going to make a change, then maybe we can put that as an agenda item for our next meeting. But I seem to, it's my understanding we have a procedure in place and every case is sent to us whether or not we proceed with it or not. So every committee member has the opportunity yeah. so to give feedback. Ethical mm -hmm. times misuse of confidential information. Conflict of interest, misuse of city resources, ethical conduct, pro proper procedure, violation of bylaws, and house rules. No, but again, when Miguel said uh, he received a complaint and it was like pretty ridiculous, we never saw that complaint. Yes, you did. Yeah, you did. Everybody gets everyone. Really? Because I, I don't think I'm getting them all in. I can send it to you. But yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't remember all. the number off the top of my head, but you remember, right? it was, uh, yeah, but the, we get everyone. Okay. So I, I think that when you we're, we're supposed to something about an issue with your email, maybe we should think no, about what's I, going I, on. I get her email because when I when I respond to her, it gets kicked said, back. And I'm just responding to her and it gets kicked back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She gets his email. But I, I, and I also she never gets, to, she doesn't get it. You do reply to all, maybe see other people are other people getting your emails? I don't know. I just replied. I, I replied. I showed you earlier. Yeah. Maybe we can reply to all. So then 
that maybe brought up because it's way did you guys yeah and if i see it i'll I'll okay you know that very good good enough um i was gonna say something i forgot oh um i think jeremy (laughs) (laughs) jeremy or chris are the ones that send out the copies of the complaints Mm -hmm. and they send it to the full committee Mm -hmm. so we should be we should be getting copies of all of them Okay. Okay. Good. Let's see here. Okay. Anything else? I'm not sure. Good meeting. Um, oh, Phyllis. What works for me? Phyllis, what email are you asking about? Whatever Miguel was mentioning that he couldn't get to open, and Serena said that it worked for her. I never got anything about that. I don't know what that is in what that's about. I don't know what I don't. Serena, are you able to say what worked for you? She was responding to what you were saying about uh, not being able to fill something in on your iPad. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a different. That was a different. Uh, that was the, the, the revised complaint yeah. form. It's hmm. going to be sent out to the full board. That'll be sent out to the full board. You okay. To the ethics committee, just so we could get an idea of it, but it'll be sent to the full board. It'll be on the website. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel, for responding. Yes, Tiz, that's what that was. I just couldn't, I was away from my phone, but yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so a motion to adjourn at 9 p.m. Second. Okay, so we are adjourned. Good night. Thank you. See everybody tomorrow night at the full board. Oh, Gordon, you have to have Good night, everybody. <laughs>